So I had to fly from Sacramento to Phoenix uh, to spend this first week down at the ranch with Isidro to, to train these horses um, to get them started. And um, I'm really excited about this gate. He just installed this automatic solar gate opener and it is the bomb. I don't have to open the gate anymore. Woohoo! Very, very happy to be home. The ranch is about another four hour drive from Phoenix. So it's been quite the day. So this is Alacran, and um, the, we were trying to get them in the chute so we can put halters on all of them, because we have four we have to work with right now. And uh, he was having none of it. Um, the To our right there, that thing that he's looking at, there's an open gate to go into that bullpen. So that gate's open, so he has a choice to go in there, or he can go in the chute, and well, he's not here. having any of it. Um, He's really just learned, trying to think of a way to get out of there um, and not go where we want him to go. Uh, it's just really kind of bizarre because we haven't really had a problem getting them in the chute or the bullpen. Um, he wants to go over things. Uh, so he kept running back into his pen. Like he had no problem running over his either to go run back into his pen. And, and they've been, uh, these Mustangs have been directed around a lot with flags and whatnot, you know, in the corral. So it's, they know the, you know, the game here. And this horse is just, no. He has a very, very different personality than a lot of Mustangs we've worked with. He um, is, he, he even spent some time in the wild on his own. Like the herds kicked him out and he was, a, you know, a loner for a while, um, which is very, very odd for a horse. Mm -hmm. So um, this guy's got a lot of confidence. Whoa. Um, and he's a thinker. He wants to, he's very calculating in how he figures things out. Um, he really thinks he can really kind that. of interesting to watch True. him no, we're just not, like work. Um, and then I was terrified that I'm like, great, he's going to really hurt himself. And he didn't, this, this horse is built like a tank. Yay. He didn't hurt himself there. I think he hurt my pet corral, but he didn't hurt himself. Um, so I kind of was pushing him forward a little bit there. Um, we, just, we just needed him to get unstuck nope. and like he just, just more than happy to run over his either. I was teasing his either. I'm like, why you run out of the way? <laughs> and oh my goodness. That, so that, that pipe crawl is seven foot tall. Oops. So after quite a bit of persuasion, we finally got him into this bullpen. Um, and you can see it's, it's quite a bit later in the day. It took a while. Um, and his sitter ended up just having to rope him. That rope he's using isn't like a normal rope. It's really, really soft. It's thick. Um, it's kind of designed so it doesn't like uh, get stuck choking him around the neck. But he's really just trying to just say, hey, dude, come in. Stop running face me that's the goal um i mean it looks it looks a little rough but he gets a release see there if he just wants him to face and be like hey pay attention to me this horse's focus is all about i want to run away how do i get out of here how do i jump out of here and we, you know he's he's really got to figure out how to uh change that thought process um so it'd be like hey let's let's stay right here with me look at me i'm i'm not i'm not gonna hurt you um so yeah, he had, this horse is powerful. Poor Sidero is doing a lot of skiing. Um, and like, he's not, he's not hurting that horse. It left zero marks on him. It looks a little rough, but it, it really isn't. And he's just kind of like, hey, you know, kind of yielded this. And this horse is just, uh, he's actually going to be super cool um, once we kind of get him to stop wanting to kind of fight us and work with us. It's really kind of fun to watch you see their work because he he never loses his cool so see he when he faces him he just gives him a total release he spent the night in there is that right mm. 
Here's something else, buddy. So I hope that you guys could see the or hear the snorts that this this guy has. They're pretty powerful. Um, it sounded like a sitter was wrestling a dragon in there uh, when I was working outside with other horses, and he was working with with uh, Alacran in in the bullpen. Um, and and he's got such a weird energy. Like he's trying to be brave, but he's a little bit you know proud. But then he's he's scared. Um, really really interesting when sitter of is enjoying working with him he's got this cool um hook that he developed so he can grab that that lead rope and then he likes to tie another rope on there so that he has a really long line because you, you don't want them to get away from you oh look at these two. Oh my gosh what y'all doing? This is why we can't have nice clean water. You guys are bad. Yes, I see you. So here's Grenya. Um, he was kind of coming at me with some <clears throat> really weird energy, uh, and this is not my forte. This this early first touches um, kind of halter breaking thingy is is not not my deal, and um, I've just kind of come to terms with that. That I'm not that great at it. Um, I've I've been uh, kind of traumatized in the past um, <laughs> at this stage, and so I'm I'm cool letting a sitter do it. Uh, thank goodness for him. So we're able to, to put Grenya in the chute, got a halter on him, and um, Isidro's kind of uh, working with him. He, he did not like the pressure of the halter. He didn't like anything touching his face. He had a big no to that, so uh, it took a little while. He had a pretty big bubble, too. Um, it took a little while for Isidro to get in that bubble, uh, but um, he was always very, very engaged, which was cool. Like, he's, he really looks, he likes to sniff things. Um, and I, I like that a lot about him, that he, he was really engaged. He wasn't like looking out, looking at other horses and kind of, how do I get out of here? He was like, okay, well, um, I don't like that pressure, but I'm still going to look at you. Oh my gosh, that mane. 
that thing was something else. And so here he's like the bubble's still pretty big. So he went and got a lunge whip so that he could get to working on touching him. Um, and he seemed pretty cool with that. Uh, he's not real flinchy, which was very promising. I, I like that about him too. Um, but he's still kind of got an ear on him. Um, I mean, we, that's so important. Those ears need to be staying moving like that. And there it goes. The bubble's getting smaller. But I love how engaged he is. He always just really kind of focused on you. So here I am. Um, I think this was the same day. This is really the first day we really worked with them. Um, and I'm working on leading here. Um, trying to keep the same pressure on him. Just trying to get those feet to move in any kind of form. Um, and then I come in and I'll try and pet him. And it was a big deal for him to be touched on the forehead. That was like a no-go area for him. He's really good about it now. But um, but yeah, that was that was tough. So just a lot of little little steps and then kind of move his feet and changing it up a little bit, not staying too long on, on the same thing to keep his interest. <clears throat> and then we would spend some time uh, working on that, that hellacious mane. Um, and here I am just, you know, throwing the rope, changing it up. I love how focused he is. He always just really kind of looking at me. He's so like involved. I love it. And uh, somehow, like we do little sessions. So I came back for another session and somehow he got that rope over his head. Um, but uh, just kind of a lot of approach and retreat, approach and retreat. And like I said, he's a sniffer. I swear he's part dog. <laughs> he sniffs everything. Anything that comes near him, he needs to sniff it first. I'm like, okay, sniff away. He likes to sniff my, my ear and neck a lot, which kind of freaks me out because I'm like, don't bite me. So um, just after that one little leading lesson, he actually started leading pretty good. And here we are. I have to go back to Sacramento. Isidro is going to drive me there uh, with Grenya. Um, so we're loading him up. Uh, he's never loaded on a trailer other than ran up in a trailer with the other horses. So this was kind of cool. We just kind of gave him an opening, be like, um, you care to walk in there? And he's like, mm, sure, why not? Um, I had already taught him kind of, uh, you know, clicking to go forward. Here he arrived uh, in Wilton, California, just outside of Sacramento. This is our friend um, Martin Padilla's barn. Um, and Over grateful there, that he's letting us stay there. And um, we couldn't quite grab the lead rope while, while he was in the in the uh, trailer. So we just said, huh, we'll just see if uh, if he'll walk in there. And he sure did. Come on. There you go. So this is the next day. Um, Isidro helped me build this round pen in the corner of the covered arena because there, there isn't really a round pen there, but I need one. Um, and this is one of his favorite tools to desensitize with. He loves using this. It's a burlap sack. It's light. It doesn't hurt him. It looks scary, but it touches him and it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't make a lot of noise. And they feel really good when they when you it, you scratch them with it. And here I am working on his mane again. I kept doing a lot of little sessions. And I love it. This barn is super busy, which I'm excited about. Um, so like there's a horse lunging over there. And he's he's just sitting there chilling while I um, undo his mane. And he would get kind of cranky with it. And so I'd have to give him a break. But we eventually got to this point. Yay! <laughs> we got done with it. And Isidro's taken him. This is the first time he's been outside. This was the next day. Um, and he's leading great. And I'm still kind of just walking behind to encourage him if I need to. Um, our goal was to get down to this hose down here to give him his first sort of like just spray off. That's a really big step and a really big deal. And we like to get it done quickly and early on because um, it really helps them to sort of be a little less reactive and sensitive all over their body. Um, he was just like, you're murdering me. <laughs> He was having none of it. He's just trying to just get him to smell it. And there he kind of took off and I dropped my phone. <laughs> um, but they could, that's why we have such a long rope because you can't let them get loose. If they get loose, oh my gosh, you're so screwed. Um, then they learn how to get away from you. And that can never be a possibility. So he, we walked back and worked on it some more. And there he is. Um, like This is the first time I've seen him kick at anything. So it's like, oh, it's good to know that he is, uh, you know, willing to kick stuff. Um, and he ended up doing really, really good. Uh, finally, like we, we, he sort of wet him on both sides 
And then we walked him back up um, into this covered arena. This is all really scary stuff. And I just love how he's he's just really keeping it together. I mean, we, we haven't worked him hard. He has never even broken a sweat once um, in all the training we've done. And this is day maybe five of training um, because we, you know, they, they had the first like couple days off because I wasn't there and um, we like to let him settle in. So it wasn't that much. So earlier he had rolled. Um, I was watching his little ride another horse and he had rolled and I noticed he rolled in this spot. So when he was all wet and itchy, I kind of squatted down over there and just kind of brought his attention down and rubbed the dirt um, to kind of invite him. And I just, my gut just told me, hey, if you just kind of chill here, um, and invite him to lay down, he will. And he sure did. And there I thought he was going to roll on me. So I backed up. So he's like, why did you move? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> he actually was really aware of where I was. So that was kind of cool. Um, and so I just stayed there and, uh, sure enough, he did it again. And I mean, this is huge. This is huge for a Mustang to do. Uh, and this is only like day five. Um, but I'd, you know, done a lot of bonding and he'd showed me a lot of signs that he was getting more relaxed. Um, like when I was brushing his mane, he would like itch his face um, and, you know, turn away and just, I mean, really, 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 really relaxed. So um, I, I kind of figured he might do this. Uh, he did a very thorough job of getting covered in mud. Good on him. But they need to do this. They need to decompress and roll like this. It's really good for them. And then it was kind of strange. He kind of came at me like I'm just hanging out there on the ground and he kind of came at me with a weird energy. Like you'll see right here, kind of puts his ears back. And so um, like he was fine right there and he was relaxed. Uh, and then he kind of came at me and I was like, oh, nope, mm -mm, don't like that energy. And so I just kind of stood up and he was like, oh, OK, I'm cool. Uh, but man, great way to finish the first um, first week. Love it. Huracan. Um, when we, we got him in the chute, no problem. Um, got the halter on, no problem. He's a really, really cool, cool, cool horse. Um, so I was able to rub on him in the chute and everything. He was just like, no big deal. Uh, he kind of sat down in there a little bit, um, but that was like, it wasn't like a big movement. He just like, I'm just going to sit down. Um, and so he's working on leading here. Um, he, he's just not, he's, this horse doesn't have like a lot of resistance in him. He's really willing and he he likes to kind of check out his see and see what he's doing and um pretty pretty easy temperament so urakan has the most adorable little mustache that a sitter was having a lot of fun playing with um but there it is it's so cute uh, so he's pretty much decided that this is the horse that he's going to train for the player's choice and compete him. Um, he's well suited to it. He's got a pretty easy temperament, willing, got a lot of try. He wants to be with people. He likes to be touched. Um, his reactions aren't big. Uh, he, he gets over stuff quickly. He retains. really disappointed in the condition of Nablina when we picked her up. She looks nothing like the video uh, that we, um, you know, used to pick her or bought her off of when the auction. Um, she's so thin and she's covered in scars and she just, uh, you watch her kind of walk around, she's just in pain. Uh, we did get her in the chute, got her halter on her. She's really easy to halt her. Um, we could pet her in there. She wasn't really flinchy or reactive, but she's, I mean, she's kind of snorty, uh, but she, she wants to follow. Like she's, she's like, oh, I want to come over there. Like you see, she's got like blood on her face. Like she's just really beat up, um, and really thin. And I, I watching her move around, I couldn't figure out, 
is is she like hunched up in pain because it kind of looks like that and then she'll do this where she kind of stands out which is another kind of posture that horses do in pain um her hocks are a little bit straight but then i think it might just be her kind of um walking like tucked a little bit like she's like her i don't know something hurts can't quite place it my gut tells me something hurts when you do pet her uh she just trembles like it doesn't feel good um not necessarily fear this horse isn't like super fearful um she's timid but she just kind of shake like nothing feels good and so we decided that's why we decided that i'm going to train grenya um and then the blina is going to go through the tip program and then she will just um she we just stopped training her uh she we can you know she doesn't have the drag rope on anymore we took that off you can walk up to her she leads great like she just kind of naturally leads like she wants to follow um so we've got that far and then she's just gonna sit and eat and get healthy and give her some time to decompress um and see where that goes um and like just for give her a few weeks just to see you know let her heal and, and feel a little bit better and gain some weight i don't like training Sidro doesn't like training skinny horses um, it's it's not a good representation of who they really are, uh, and I think it's really unfair to them. We actually have that in our training contract where uh, they have to be a certain um, body condition score, or or we'll just turn them away. But she, I mean, she just looks like she doesn't feel good. Poor thing. So hopefully, update on her will be uh, much better. But we're just going to hold off training. Please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button below so that you can see more videos. Thanks for watching.